welcome to the 2014 Sustainable Quality Awards. One of the actions all of these restaurants have taken to be here today is they're purchasing everything from the farmer's market. We're sold out this year. You get new people every year who see the energy, you know, they see the commitment and they want to be part of it. We love to be examples of what it means to build and work sustainably. We see ourselves as ambassadors to the city, helping visitors and locals discover Santa Monica while riding a bike and reducing pollution and congestion. We're very proud to be honored with this prestigious group of businesses and organizations, uh, many of whom we're proud to call our clients. I also want to thank Santa Monica for encouraging this and a Sustainable Works for really helping guide us through this process. Um, it's been eye-opening. Sustainable tourism is about rethinking, adapting, and changing. A balance has to be found between limits and usage to ensure that tourism affects the environment as little as possible. It's being able to achieve what we've achieved in such a short time is really inspiring to what we can do in the future. It's a beautiful day in Santa Monica and it reminds us of how privileged we are to do business here every day. On behalf of the many team members that can't be here to accept this award and be honored, I'm incredibly proud to work for a company that cares about each of its employees as well as sustainability. Red Bull also cares about the community in which we find ourselves. And we are glad to have an opportunity to engage Santa Monica and Sustainable Works regarding our efforts. So as the paper, we do a lot of acknowledging and a lot of, uh, and a lot of reporting on businesses that are doing well. And I just have to say, it's really nice to be on the other side of the fence on this one. So thank you very much. It feels really wonderful to be honored for something that's so much part of who we are, um, from our business practices to our upcycled products in our museum's store. A lot of folks think, hey, to be a lead gold hotel or to be a sustainable hotel, you have to lack in luxury. And I would argue that that is not the case. One of the things that our team really strives to do is set the benchmark for all hotels. We really think that um, in the position of being uh, a company that promotes communication and information that uh, we can also uh, strongly help promote that uh, to our users and many citizens around the world. Mark instilled in all of us at Morley Builders a, a great gift and the passion to be true to our community and sustainable practices. And I want to thank all of those in our community who are not here today uh, that really make us who we are, uh, the people on the streets, uh, the people who live and rent here, uh, because they have really, really helped Perry's become all that it is today. It's putting principles ahead of profits. You know, there are a lot of clients that would love for us to do business with, but if it's not inherent to, to who we are, uh, we, we kind of pass on it. Thanks for having us, and again, congratulations to all the winners. What began as a collaborative effort in 1995 to celebrate sustainable businesses has developed into an annual event attracting over 300 participants each year and recognizing more than 125 local businesses. In that time, the Santa Monica Sustainable Quality Awards have featured keynote speakers such as actor Ed Bagley Jr., Patagonia founder Yvonne Chouinard, former California Senator Sheila Kuehl, and chef and radio host, Evan Kleiman. Today we are excited to add Dr. Michael Crook to the list of keynote speakers who have come to our awards ceremony to share their vision for a more sustainable community. Dr. Michael Crook is a sustainable business maverick. From 1999 to 2005, Dr. Crook served as president and CEO of Patagonia Inc. and Patagonia's parent company, Lost Arrow Corporation. He is founder and lead faculty of Pepperdine University's MBA certificate in socially, ethically, and environmentally responsible business strategy. Known as SEER, this program teaches leading entrepreneurs and business executives how to develop a framework for, 
a framework to make strategic organizational decisions that incorporate social responsibility, environmental stewardship, and financial strength with a quality product or service. Dr. Crook was named one of North America's top 100 thought leaders in trustworthy business behavior and was recognized by the Ford Foundation and Shift.com as one of the 10 innovators changing our world. Personally, as a former mountain guide, active outdoor enthusiast, and sustainability professional, I'm excited to have Dr. Crook here today to share his visionary perspective on business innovation. With that, I'd like to invite Dr. Michael Crook to the stage. Well, thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to be here. Uh, this is an incredible event. It's an incredible city. And uh, it oft, often, almost always, uh, takes a real visionary and someone to lead. And often, uh, those visionaries are uh, as humble as they are accomplished. And in, in today's case, I'd just like to recognize uh, um, uh, Dean Kobani, who's been here from the very beginning and started this whole thing 20 years ago. <laughs> and I'm going to tie my shoe now so I don't fall down. So uh, uh, thanks for the wonderful introduction and inviting me here today. Uh, just, I'm going to tell you just a, a few stories. Uh, and uh, I got started in sustainability just growing up in Oregon, very sustainable place, hunting, camping, fishing, backpacking, and just loving it. And uh, right out of high school, I joined the Navy and became a Navy SEAL. And uh, I was in the teams for uh, four years. And the main thing that I got out of the teams is strategy. You know, as a young man right out of high school, you learned that that you don't just go in and, and uh, run, you know, run into something and expect to be successful. It does not work that way. And strategy is two parts. Strategy is the vision, but it is also bolting that vision to the ground is the operational effectiveness. And so I came out of it as uh, out of the teams as a 22-year-old person who really understood strategy. So I. I uh, really believed in you know, the outdoors. It was holistic to me. It was internal. Uh, it was intrinsically motivated. It was part of my DNA. I, t I, went, I got an undergrad in forestry and got a job with a very uh, wonderful company called the Pacific Lumber Company. And it was a 120-year-old company, give or take. Uh, didn't, didn't clear cut. Very sustainable uh, business, uh, civil cultural prescriptions. Uh, worked very closely with fishing uh, societies and National Geographic and Sierra Club, and it really was an, an organization that understood what, what uh, sustainability meant. Uh, and one day, those values all came crushing down. The, the, the company was purchased by Maxam, a leveraged buyout, and almost instantaneously, they told us to go back into those stands where we had, had a certain civil culture prescription and clear cut. And they proceeded to continue to do that until the company was bankrupt close to nine, nine years later. I mean, it just goes to show you, it's just that when you think short term versus long term, what, what happens? And it really started make me, making me think about this model and this business model about what is success. So I went and got an MBA. And out of the MBA, I worked for another number of companies that were very much understood what their values were, and they understood what their shared purpose was. And because of that, there was very high engagements in these organizations. One of them was Kelty and, and the backpack company. And when I went there, it had been owned by a large company, and they'd kind of lost their way. And uh, you know, the, the unifying theme of my remarks today is what I would like to say is that there, there has to be a shared purpose. Certainly, we in this room all have a shared purpose. And that is, in fact, so powerful. That's the foundation that you built everything on. Great organizations, great, great people, uh, great countries, great cities. The unit of analysis is, is really uh, irrelevant. It's all about that shared purpose. Well, at Kelty, we had lost our way about products. So we went and had a strategic planning meeting in uh, Ely, Minnesota in the dead of winter, 40 degrees below zero. And we used the gear that we were making. Tent poles snapped, sleeping bags didn't work, packs broke down. 
And we came down and said, hey, we have to figure this out. It has to be about product and service. And that's one thing I'd really like to just really in inform you today, and I'd like you to remember to take away, because sustainability isn't enough. You have to have a great product or service. You have to win in the rivalry box. To have a great business, to have a sustainable business, to be here next year at these awards, you have to win against your competitors. That means that you have to have a great product or service. Patagonia. Yeah, I was CEO there for six years. What you don't know is that when I went there, it was for sale. Not public information. Won't read it in any book anymore, in anywhere. It was for sale. Why was it for sale? Was it because they weren't sustainable enough? Was it because it wasn't eco-friendly? Not at all. It was because the product and service wasn't winning in the, in the rivalry box. And the financials weren't anywhere near where they ne needed to be to be a sustainable company. Of course, it's such a great company. Yvonne Chenard and Melinda Chenard, his wife, are such incredible visionaries uh, that we turned the company around on a dime when we started going back to the key principles that we learned in the team. Strategy is two things. Strategy, which is the vision, and the operational effectiveness, bolting those ideas to the ground. You need to have four quadrants in a business. You have to have great people, human resources. You have to have the systems to be able to scale and to be able to keep track of things. You have to have great finances. And then, most importantly, you have to have a great product or service. You have to have all four of those things. Sustainability permeates all of those things. Michael Porter talks about shared value. Shared value is that place where society and organizations meet. It's the intersection of those two things. And, he, and this shared value he talks about is when you take and you embed corporate social responsibility and you embed environmentalism into the value chain of the organization. And when you do that, it's not we do good and then give our money away to this environmentally friendly thing or we do this, it's, it's in the business. And what it does is it lowers your acquisition of customers because you have like-minded customers that have this engagement, that buy into your product or service, they buy into your organization and they support you. And what it does is it differentiates your business. Then there's a customer's willingness to pay. You can have a higher margin, a more sustainable business. But you have to have all four of those quadrants together. After Patagonia, I co-founded a venture capital firm with Steve Case, who started AOL, Revolution Living. And I remember very, very clearly one day, we had bought a car sharing business called Flexcar. And it, wasn't insolvent. It wasn't doing very well at all. And I remember sitting in a board meeting after we'd had it for about six or eight months and we were pouring millions of dollars into it. And I remember him looking at me and I, and I told him, I said, you know, I don't know if this, this collaborative consumption society is going to work out, Steve. This is really hard. It's asset intensive. It's millions and millions of dollars. And he looked at me and he said, hey, Michael, is this a good idea or not, this car sharing thing? I said, yeah, that's a good idea. He said, well, what should we do? I said, okay, let's, we doubled down and, and uh, of course the, we merged with Zipcar and it was a billion dollar IPO two years later. Uh, but the, the, the point of telling you this is that sometimes you've got to see out in front. Yvonne Chouinard, when he decided to do organic cotton, it was 40% of the business. He didn't know how he was going to do organic cotton. He just knew that he went to the cotton fields, he saw what was going on and he did not want to be a part of that. It was, a, it was a rock wall that he was not going to go past. Sometimes you just have that, have that conviction. Yeah, well, I thought, Professor, you just said we need four quadrants of the business. We need to think. Well, sometimes you need visionaries that see things that others don't, like me. So the collaborative consumption society uh, uh, domain, it's a multi unbelievably growing fast market in everything now from cars to dresses to you name it. That's all about big bang disruption. Christensen has a model about innovation where it starts off kind of slowly and you have to, you have to cross what's called, what he calls is the chasm. And once you get over the chasm, the early adopters uh, take, take it on and then boom, it goes to the mean and everybody takes it on. Well, there's a new model. And the new model is big bang disruption. And technology is driving big bang disruption. Every one of us, no matter what business we're in, technology is an incredible, in critical component 
of our strategies going forward. Think about, think about uh, Zipcar and, and, and Flexcar and car sharing and where that was. Think about GPS, which was a big part of that Zipcar story, which I don't have time to tell. But the old GPS technology, it was TomTom Tom and Garmin. They had 95% of the market. Well, the day these things hit the market, and we had an app that did everything that, that Garmin and TomTom Tom did, was the day that their market share went down below 50% and has continued to go down, and now they're working on other technologies. But the thing, the, 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 my point is, is that we have to look ahead. You have to see the tides of what's coming. And I'm going to tell you something. I totally believe this. Sustainability and CSR, it's a rising tide. If you're not embedding it into your business right now, you are going to be irrelevant 10 years from now. Absolutely. I firmly believe that. You embed it into your value chain and you make it a part of what you do. At, at, uh, at Pepperdine, we have a program and we have a table 17. Number of my students here I'm very proud of from the SEER program, uh, Socially, Environmentally, Ethical Responsibility. And here's what we learn in class. Here's what we're about. SEER, it's not about learning about the environment or corporate social responsibility. No, not anymore. It's about advanced strategy. It's about being granular with your business. It's about understanding every activity you have in your business and having a point to what your strategy is. We teach a shared value approach where we embed social and environmental responsibility. And it's not all this tree huggers like me that, that are that in the tie dyes that, uh, that, that used to be. Now it is, it, is, it is the best of the best, table 17, that are going out there and they are advanced strategists. They go into a business and they are looking at how how this rising tide of sustainability is going to absolutely change the world for the better. I'm a complete optimist because of the young people sitting at table 17 right now. Thank you for having me.